episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, realtor here in Ottawa with Sun Ottawa. And today we have one of my friends and actually colleagues, and we've been kind of uh, a little out of each other's life for the last little bit, and finally we kind of reconnected. Danielle Unsworth, how are you? I'm amazing. Thank you so much for having me and having this chat. I'm really excited. Tell me a little bit more about how you evaluate, for example, selling and buying. Yes, that's a great question. So in 2023, that's exactly what I was doing. I was assessing our portfolio and then shifting our uh, priorities. Uh, you know, some of our properties were doing really well. So those were keeping the cash flow, the equity is doing really well. And other ones, like some of the lower units, like three units, um, you know, like the triplex, the duplexes, we we're just like, mm, you know, and... So, and they were easier to sell, right? It's much easier to sell a duplex and a triplex than it is to sell because like a 15 more affordable, unit. Yeah. Exactly. So, and it's just like the due diligence is also easier. The timeline to mm -hmm. sell them is much faster. So we did exit a few properties because of those factors. Like we were really looking to concentrate on the larger units or high cash flow. So yeah. that it was more efficient as a whole for our portfolio. So we exited like the smaller multifamilies and kept anything that was, I, our minimum was six and up. And uh, if it's a single family, it had to have other purposes. Like we have a single family home here in Ottawa in Central Park. I will never sell that property because you cannot buy a single family in the city at the price that we got it for. And that's a house that I'm going to leave for my children. You know, if they wanted to go to Carleton University or Ottawa U, it's right there, they can house hack. So that property, even though it's a single family home, we're not really cash flowing on it. But for the long term vision of that property, it's 100% something I'm keeping. For those of us that don't know, what is house hack? Okay, yes, great question. Again, house hacking is when you buy the home and then you live in one room, you rent out the other rooms or the basement, or you can buy like a duplex and live in one, rent out the other. As essentially, the, the strategy is that you have someone else paying for your mortgage or subsidizing it yeah. to uh, like a certain amount. And that's what I want for my kids. It's like ride share in a way. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you're but for homes. Yes, but you are the owner, so then you get to you know manage it, and it also gives you a really good way to pretty much learn how to property manage as well, right? Because you're the owner, you're the investor, you learn how to manage tenant relationships, you learn how to manage the property. So it's a really great way to start, and that's the one thing I would do if I had to go back. I would have bought like, you know a four unit if you can, if not duplex, triplex, live in one. You can, if you have a two, three bedroom, live in one room, rent the other two bedrooms and then rent all the other units as well. And then in like a year or two, for sure you'll have enough equity to buy another one. So if anybody's listening, if you're in your twenties, because to me, it's really hard to house hack with two kids, a dog, a cat, like, you know, it's just yeah. not really like the best way when you have a large family. But if you're a single or a person or, you know, you're a young couple, it really is the best way to get started. It gives you like a huge advantage because you only need 5% uh, down payment. Because you're living in the property. Because you're living in the property. Exactly. So it's really like it's a huge, huge way to accelerate your real estate investing. It also gives you a little bit of a stable uh, sort of situation where like, you know, one month, maybe the finances are a lot mm -hmm. of whack. You've got somebody there shouldering the mm -hmm. mortgage with you. Yes. It's like having a partner without having the partner yeah. nonsense that goes with it. <laughs> but you're also like the boss, really, if exactly. you think about it, right? Because yeah. you're the owner, you're the landlord, you're the investor. So really, it's just such an amazing strategy. And I just... Uh, and there's pluses and minuses for any of those as well, yes. too. Like, for example, for me, a plus would be you have that ability to kick them out at any... Things are not going well. Mm -hmm. Hey, by the end of the month, I need... There is no Ontario tenant tenancy sort of uh, laws that are affecting it because they're living within your property versus um, when they're living in a unit, it's a different story because that's mm -hmm. a separate dwelling unit on its own. Then at that point, the Ontario Tenancy Act is fully in effect with that, mm -hmm. that situation. I, I would I would double check just in case because if you do, you know, sign a lease with them, um, they would have certain um, expectations. So I would just you know, make sure that your agreement is written so that you have an understanding. Mm -hmm. And if you have a condition in there where it says, you know, if 
it doesn't work out for whatever reason, you know, I'm able to give you 30 days notice. So you would really make sure that those expectations are yeah. clear. I'm a big fan of having everything in writing. Like I majored in law. So for me, I read all the fine prints. I make you, sure. You saved me a question. I was just going <laughs> to ask you to tell the audience, what, what did you major in? But that's fantastic. Yeah. So I majored in law and I minored in psychology for my undergrad and for my master's, I actually have a master's in international development and global studies. And so to me, that's why, you know, the people that have worked with me, they're going to tell you I'm super due diligent in my underwriting. You know, I read all the fine prints. Like I'm the I'm that person that, you know, when you get your credit card like benefits and there's like all the little stars, I'm at the bottom reading, making sure like everything Those makes three sense. stars mean something. Yes, exactly. I'm like, okay, it's referencing footnote number <laughs> seven. Okay, I go to number seven, I read it because it's so important. It's everything is in the details, right? The so, devil is in the details. Exactly. So if you have a lease, you got to make sure you're reading everything. And it's the same thing when I work with partners, I really ask them questions to make sure they understand what's going on in the contract, the agreement. I go through line by line if I need to, because I think it's so important for people to be aware of what they're getting into and that they're not afraid to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And Going back to that question, which we kind of diverted a little okay, bit, yes, talking about the, uh, the house hack. Yes. How do you sell off and buy? How do you sell off and buy? Like how do you evaluate oh, it? Oh, yes. Okay, so that's exactly what we would do. So if their property meets our long-term goals, so for this one was, you know, the single family for our children, we're going to keep that one. And let's say a property is not performing well in terms of cash flow. Usually I like to aim for $100 per door, per unit. So if a property is not cash flowing that, we're going to really look at the property to see if we can either decrease the cost to make that requirement or if it's just not possible, we're going to look at possibly yeah. selling. And um, so that's one of the requirements. So it's either like long-term vision, cash flow, and also if, it looks like it's going to be in need of a lot of repair in the next five years. And so usually we plan for that. But it's like, oh, is it going to be worth all of these repairs if the equity is only X amount? So there's quite a lot of factors that go. And that's why I spent most of 2023 looking at all the properties and making sure that our portfolio is really efficient. Mm -hmm. Because I love efficiency, <laughs> like productivity and efficiency are really key to running a business. Yeah. You know? And it is, at the end of the day, it is a business, right? Yeah. Like I'm, you know, having the property, I've got this rent coming in, I've got this expenses going out. I want to know at the end of the day what mm -hmm. sort of money I'm making out of that property, right? Like you exactly. said, $100 a day or $100 a, a month per door is really what you're aiming for. Mm -hmm. So how do you work to increase that or reduce that if you want to share? Sure, yeah. There's so many different ways. So there's only two ways to make more money in a rental property. You either increase your income, the rents, or like you add a storage unit, you charge for parking, or there's a laundry machine. So all those ways are your strategies for increasing income. And then the other way is to reduce your expenses, right? So property management, maybe you find a different company that charges less, or you pick a level of service that requires less of their input. So that way, you know, they, they'll charge you less or you try to do some of it yourself. Maybe you do your own bookkeeping to save costs. So those are the ways that you can increase your net income is either to increase the cash flow by all these different strategies or you reduce your expenses. Yeah. And sometimes um, refinance might be an, another option as well too to bring down the mortgage so you're actually cash flow. Yes, yeah, so if you refinance, it, it really, again, it depends. If you refinance, most likely you'll have a, a higher mortgage because you're either pulling out the equity but you can also lengthen the amortization period which will then offset that higher income i mean higher mortgage so it really depends where that property is at in terms of its debt and income, income ratio yeah exactly and so yeah so really that's what i was doing i was looking at all the properties making sure they meet all of those requirements and then we make the decision whether to sell or keep so what's your biggest advice for folks that are trying to get into investment and building a portfolio like mm -hmm. yours or similar? Yes. So my number one is my number one tip is, you know, it sounds simple, but find someone that is doing what you're doing and don't listen to people who are not investors. I had a lot of people say negative things while I was on this journey 
and a lot of time unfortunately it they're the people that are close to you because they're you know afraid for you they don't want you to lose money but really like find someone if your goal is to buy a triplex find someone that owns a lot of triplexes mm -hmm. it makes sense for them to show you how to do it right and then you're not going to have that fear and sometimes you do have to spend money like you know you heard my story i spent five thousand dollars my first sort of investment in myself and it has you know given me infinite returns like having your single friends telling you relationship advice. yes exactly <laughs> like you really have to be careful who you're taking advice from yeah and so you know hire someone that's doing what you want to do uh pay for the, pay for the coaching pay for the program if it makes sense to you you know like make sure you do your due diligence with that too because i know there's tons of coaching programs right now uh, you know, I would always say ask to speak to previous students in that program yeah. because you want to make sure that they succeeded as well, that it was worth the money, right? No, 100%. Like the last thing you want to do is hire somebody that says that they're a coach or they've mm -hmm. done it and then you find out you just wasted your five, ten grand on yeah. something that's not really exactly what's ought to be. You yes, know? and speak to different types of <clears throat> past students, not just like beginners, for example, right? because people will come to you with different experiences. If your goal is to learn how to buy a triplex, don't speak to a student that has, you know, um, experience in land development. And they, they said, you know, it's amazing, but it's like, you're not trying to learn land development. You just want to buy like a triplex, right? So it's just different experiences. And always be mindful of, like I said, how you interpret people's um, negative comments you know try to put that aside and just remember they're not investors they're not trying to do what you're trying to do believe in your own vision if your vision is to create wealth using real estate find people who are wealthy in real estate and listen to them yeah. versus other people who have you know like different careers and different paths right exactly yeah the biggest thing you know for for me at least like this is something that we've learned when i was really just a little kid my my grandma used to say it all the time if you want to be happy partner up with somebody that's already happy yes of course yes because they'll show you what happiness is mm -hmm. versus i just want to get a partner and like he's already or she's already angry like it's, it's just not gonna <laughs> no not gonna get there the same goes with real estate is like if i want to learn how to become wealthy i'm not gonna go learn it from the guy that's struggling Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with someone that's done it time and time and time again, and they're able to go, here's the wisdom that yes. I'm learning or I've learned over the years. I'm going to pass it on to you yeah. and go from exactly. there. Yeah. What are some of the, you know, the aha moments that you've had over the years in the last 15, 20 years? Oh, my goodness. I have so many aha moments. Uh, I try to share them on my uh, Instagram because every time I think of something like a lesson learned, I'm like, oh, my God, I need to share this because I don't want people to make this mistake. So my first, first lesson is how I got my first mortgage. At that time, I was a full-time waitress and I had no idea what like a B lender was. I didn't know anything about that. So my first aha moment would be like, there are other ways to get a mortgage besides going to a regular bank. Yeah. So just remember that, like if you feel stuck or you've been like refused or not accepted for a mortgage and didn't qualify, just remember that there are always options. And so that's my number one aha moment is like even now, like when I get stuck or something is going like not the way I'm looking for, yeah. I just think, OK, there's other options. Like what are those options? And if you can't figure it out, find someone to help you figure it out. You don't have to be the expert in everything. 100 percent. You know, 100 percent. There's always if there's a will, there's a way. Exactly. Right. Like if yeah. you're I'll give you an example. I had somebody that's been dreaming about buying a house for probably over 25 years. Worst credit I've ever seen in my life. Oh, wow. OK. And. We, we just couldn't like we, finally I said you know what like, talk to a buddy of mine out in Toronto he's a private mm -hmm. lender he's got his own hundred hundred million dollar mm -hmm. sort of fund that he gives out every now and then okay and see what he says it's not the most ideal it's not yeah. the perfect yeah. mortgage he's paying maybe you know 12 percent 13 percent on the on that down payment that yeah. he was able to get a little over 35 percent that he was okay. able to get and then he financed the rest for him at you know 11 12 percent did that for about two years yeah. built up his credit and then refinanced and was able to do all of that. So, mm -hmm. but the thing is, the money that he made in the house over the two mm -hmm. years, if he decided to just go the regular route and, yeah. and actually wait for the bank to approve him at some point, he would have lost all that equity. I know. That's the thing, right? Like, you struggle a bit at the beginning, like I did with my B lender at that time. I mean, Fadi, I had to like 
scrape up everything I could to buy that first house. You know, like I had my waitressing tips. And like I said, I, I remember asking my friend to borrow because I needed like a deposit. And I didn't mm -hmm. have it. So I didn't realize all of these fees were coming up. So it was hard that first year because I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. But now looking back, it's like there are so many options. There are so many ways that I could have, you know, done instead. But I still managed to go through it. And, you know, I still own that property today and it's infinite returns that property. Like I've refinanced it at least three times to buy other properties with it. And so to me, you know, using your property as a bank, that's that's always, exactly it. Yeah. And honestly, my mission, I, 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 I just want everyone to own their primary residence and then have at least one more rental so that they can feel financially secure. They're always going to own their home. They're not going to kicked out because of X, Y, Z by the owner, the landlord, the investor. It's their home. They're going to feel safe for their family. And then I want them to own at least one more property so that they can leverage it, you know, for their retirement, for their kids' education, for anything really, because it's going to be your force saving. And, you know, and my, my mission is not to make everybody wealthy enough to buy private jets. You know, my mission is to make sure that families feel financially secure and to me, real estate makes sense. Own your home and then own at least one rental so that you can reuse that equity to mm -hmm. do things that will make your life easier and better. I met this family about maybe a year and a half ago. It was like a really weird lead that came off Facebook. Oh, I was okay. like, oh, I'm just not going not okay. to bother with it. But then I was like, no, I'm going to call it. Called it, chat with them. And lovely, lovely family. I'm not going to mention names or where they're from. Again, my clients. Okay. You know, keep their privacy aside. And so far, I think this year we're at home number four. That's amazing. Right. And, yeah. and that was a year and a half ago. And then what it was, I fired that dream in them of you guys own your own home. You have almost 70 percent, 80 percent paid off. Wow. Why can't you have five homes? Mm -hmm. And it was just like yeah. massive aha moment that yes. just went into their head. And they're like, how? Here's how. Yeah. We go to the first house. Three months later, Fatty, we're ready again. Second yeah. house, third house, fourth house. And we're still, they're on target probably by next year to be at house number 10. That's amazing. Yeah. And and those guys, like again, not mentioning names, they're both working as PSWs, mm -hmm. personal support yeah. workers. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. Anybody can do it. Yes. If you put your mind to it. Yes. And you, you actually do the proper due diligence and all yes. of that to just get where you're supposed to go. Yeah. On a last note, Danielle, I just want you to kind of give the audience a piece of advice that you've learned over the years. Okay, so I think my biggest advice is really like make the commitment to change your current situation and be ready to take action because none of this would have happened for me if I didn't decide, okay, I'm going to change my life. Like this is just not my mm -hmm. life anymore. I'm going to change it and then doing what you need to do to make it happen by putting yourself out there. So don't keep your real estate investing Dreams goal plans, yeah. to yourself because if you're keeping it to yourself, no one will be able to help you. So I put myself out there and then all of this, you know, help abundance opportunities came to me. So for my biggest advice is if you're serious about owning real estate, call yourself a real estate investor because that's what you're going to be and you put yourself out there and you share and you also provide value. Like I always try to leave a conversation. I try to give value after I leave so that they have something either like an action item or they, there's something that they can do to make their lives just a bit better. Yeah. You know, when you provide value, it always comes back to you. 100%. The, the one thing that I wanted to add and you kind of uncovered a little bit throughout is follow that Japanese sort of Kaizen model, right? Like it doesn't have to be perfect. No. Just do it. Do the little minimum action. Uh, like you said, with your first property, like you're scraping around oh, doing this, yeah. doing that <laughs> to get it where it needs yeah. to be. Just get started. Yep. Get started. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, yeah. but just get somewhere. Yes. Ask questions. Don't hesitate to put your hands up yes. and say, hey, I'm, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Hire a coach. Yes. And for that, guys, I want you to be able to, you know, follow the link here and just make sure to follow Danielle as well, too, on Instagram. Amazing coach. Lots of opportunities that you can learn from her and learn from other investors that are like her. And, you know, one thing I know about Danielle is that if she can't help you 
at least she's gonna guide you in the right direction mm -hmm. or tell you where to go. Or let's just say as an example, you're not looking at multifamily, looking at maybe development. She's gonna tell you where to mm -hmm. go. She's got a lot of friends. Some of our, my friends, some are, we're in the same circle kind of thing. Yeah. So it makes it a lot easier for you guys to kind of go from there. Really appreciate it, Danielle. Thank you so much for uh, being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. And the value that you bring to the city and, and Canada in general. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I'm so glad to kind of just kick back and then mm -hmm. kind of meet you back again and you know after 20 years or so i know it's crazy i can't wait to have you on the next couple of networking events there's a couple more i think I'm, you might have registered for one but there's a couple more yes. as well too i'd love for you to i'll tell you a little bit more Sounds after the good. show thank you guys really mm -hmm. appreciate it if you like what you see please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and this way you can get a lot more of these and hit the bell icon as well too so you can get actually a lot more of the episodes that come out